Hey guys, welcome back to HD Arachnids. I'm Dave. As always, we got my lovely wife Helen here too. Hi guys. And today we're going to be doing a double rehouse of a couple of Formingo Chylus species. And then we're also going to give you an update on Gigastan, our Gigas communal. And, uh, you know, I know it's been a little while since we put out a video, but like I explained in my last video, we've been, my dad's been having a whole lot of health issues and things have just been, <laughs> well, things have been really tough. So we haven't had a whole lot of spare time, but wanted to get this video out because we needed to rehouse these spiders anyhow. So I thought I would go ahead and, you know, make sure I recorded it all for you guys and uh, get a new video up. And then uh, a few days ago, I recorded a little Gigas communal update as well. So we're going to put that on the end of the video so you can see how they're doing and, uh, yeah, that's, that's about what I got for news. Um, we had uh, Fatal Fangs 3, and uh, you know, as you guys know, we entered. Uh, we did get knocked out by Couch Locked Arachnophobia in round two, so congratulations, Craig. Your clip was great, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, we had a great time participating, and we're still going to continue participating and watch all the lives and all that stuff because it's just, you know, it's a really cool thing to watch, and uh, a lot of these people are putting a ton of work into these clips, and there's just some amazing, amazing clips. Like, you know, Kieran from Alternative Inverts, his stuff has just been, you know, like top notch so far. I think uh, Helen's really enjoyed it too, haven't you? Yes, I have. And then there's a couple others that I'm kind of rooting for too, like Scana Exotics. I, you know, he just kind of came out of nowhere and I, I really love his clips too. So hopefully he does real well and we'll, you know, of course, Mark's Tarantulas. He's kind of been everybody's favorite throughout the Fatal Fang series. And We'll see how it goes, so uh, good luck to everybody else that's still in there, and you know, as always, may the best fangs win there. So I think now we're going to go ahead and uh, get into the rehouse section of the video here, and we'll show you guys how we make the enclosures, and then we'll go ahead and rehouse the spiders, and uh, you know, these are forming a chylus, so you know, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to be a little bit feisty, hopefully we'll have a nice smooth rehouse on both of them, but <laughs> you know, who knows what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, without further ado, we'll get into it, so uh, yeah, here we go guys. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is the Formingo Chylus already. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the enclosure made up. I'll show you guys how I do that. It's real quick. These enclosures came with a little bag of creature soil, and I really like this stuff, so we're going to use this. And we're going to add a little bit of our own substrate into it, because it's not quite enough substrate for my liking, because these guys, even though they're technically supposed to be arboreals, quotation marks there, they tend to do quite a bit of burrowing, as you'll see when we get to the rehouse part. So we'll put a little bit of our own substrate in there. Doesn't look much different, really. Make one more, I think. And this is half the fun of having tarantulas, is getting to build these enclosures and do these rehouses. I always enjoy this. So I think it's Helen's favorite part, too, isn't it? Yeah, I just don't like the arboreal ones. They're not as fun. Yeah, she doesn't like doing the arboreal ones, but... They're actually probably my favorite of the three, you know, main types of tarantulas there are, the arboreals. So we'll go ahead and stick a cork bark in here. Nice size piece. Kind of jam it down in there real good. I don't want it to come all the way up to the top because if she does, does end up, you know, making the tube and dirt curtains on there, I want to be able to, you know, have a little bit of room in between the top and there to work with so that she's not going to be able to get out so easy if I'm feeding her and all that stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and throw some of this moss in here. This is just sphagnum moss you can get at the pet shop. They had, a, had this stuff on sale at Petco actually not too long ago. We got a pretty good size amount for just five bucks, which is really cheap for the sphagnum moss. And we'll get that in there looking like that. Get a little bit behind there. That looks pretty good. And then of course we got to have our water dish. This one we're just using a big deli cup and I'll kind of sink that down into the dirt just a smidge so that it's maybe not quite level with the surface area but pretty close and then we're just gonna wet her down and fill up that water dish got one of these handy dandy squirt bottles now these things if you guys don't have one i, I highly suggest getting one of these i got this thing at menards for like 10 bucks and you can adjust it so it's like a stream or a spray and it, it's it's way better than using a small bottle All right, fill up the water dish, and we'll just spray down the whole enclosure here. Get a little moisture in there. We just made this batch of substrate like three, four days ago, so it's still pretty moist, so I don't need to add a whole lot of moisture there. Just enough to... And there we go. That uh, 
that's our enclosure for the Flamingo Kylis ever ready. And then we're going to go ahead and cut out here and we'll move to the rehouse part of uh, the video on this one. And then after that, we'll do the other Flamingo Kylis. All right, guys. So like I said, the first one we're going to do is our Flamingo Kylis ever ready, Izzy. And one of the reasons we're rehousing him is we're really battling a mold issue in this enclosure here. The, underneath the water dish where the wet spot is, it actually started molding quite a bit. We've had this in a few enclosures, but luckily we haven't had a whole lot of it. And he, I think this one was a male, yeah, a suspect male on this one, really just needs a new enclosure. He's getting pretty big, so it's time to put him in something. I think this will last him probably, we'll probably have to rehouse him one more time after this, but not for quite a while. So I got everything I need handy. I got my catch bottle, got my tongs, paintbrush, new enclosure made up. Everything's ready to go. We got our catch tub here, so we're going to be as safe as we can be. I'm going to go ahead. And I also have a catch cup over here, too. Because going to never have too many catch cups on hand. And like I said, these things, you know, even though they're supposed to be, you know, technically an arboreal spider, I don't know if you can see, there's a big burrow down there, and she's just... Pretty much just kind of holes up down weight underneath the cork bark and you know I, I i do see or he actually i'm sorry he burrows more than he burrows more than he makes the the dirt curtains and the web tunnel up top but that's okay we want to make sure he's got enough substrate in the new enclosure to burrow plenty but still have the arboreal aspect to the enclosure let's see here get the tongs on this piece of cork bark here and get it out Hopefully he doesn't come. I think oh, I see him down there. Alright, there's a lot of a lot of webbed up substrate piled up there, but we'll see what we can do here. So we're gonna get the bottom. Did you see him moving? No. Yeah. Not really. Whoop, oh, here he comes. There he is. So we'll just get the bottle right down in there and hopefully we can Sorry. Te oh, nope. Move the camera a bit there. Oh, that's all right. Come on, buddy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's acting crazy. He is a crazy. Did you see that thing yeah. flopping around there? He was all over the place. Come on, go up there. He's like, what the heck is happening? Yes, that was that was quite feisty there. Uh, whoa. Oh. So, all right. He is definitely, I think I should be able to get him to go up into the catch cup now. There we go. Oh, oh, back down. Back down. I just got to get it. Stay there, buddy. He is a bolty little thing. He definitely is a bolty, bolty, feisty spider. All right. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a glare, so you're not going to be able to see real well, but... Not the best, but maybe once he gets in anyone, because now he's walking back up. Yeah. He's a... Mm -hmm. A pretty spider. He's gotten big. Yeah, he's gotten quite a bit bigger than, than he was the last time we actually really had to do anything with him. His abdomen's looking a little small, and that's just because he just molted about two weeks ago, and he had his first meal like three, four days ago. Nice, couple juicy, nice crickets. So we're going to... You want to grab that old enclosure and just get it out of the way for me, please? Yeah. I'm going to stop for a second, too. All right. Okay, so now we got the old enclosure out of our way. Um, I think I'm going to have you stand over here with the lid just in case I need you to pop that lid on real fast, if that's all right. Yeah. Oh, you got the... I'm not worried about getting super good footage. I'm just more worried about the tarantula. And... All right. Well, let's do it then. Let me get this lid in the... where it's supposed to be. Yep. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this down here and hopefully he's just going to go onto the cork bark when I nudge him down in there. That's it. That's the plan anyway. And then if I need to, I'll just drop the bottle and you can just close the lid. Just make sure you watch out for legs. Yep. Okay, come on down out of there. Of course, he's got to be way up in the... In the lid. In the lid part there. There we go. Come on out of there. On. You're all right, buddy. Come on. Come on, baby. Just go in, oh. please. He's trying to kick that paintbrush's butt. Yeah, he's not happy. <laughs> he's definitely... He is leggy. He is really leggy. Come on. <coughs> no, don't go back up in there. So, yeah, that's... I just don't want to take the lid off nope. and reverse it. Like, you can, I know you can kind of 
you know, pop the top off and get him to go out of that hole, but I don't want to do that in this case. Okay, just, he's going to come up with a bottle. Lid, lid. All right. Somewhat. Just let him do his own thing, maybe. Yeah, he'll come off of there in a second. I knew he was going to come up the side of the bottle as soon as I saw him come around that side. A little big. He has gotten really big. Well, that went about as good as it could go there. There we go. And he's still freaking out. He's back up top again. Yeah, I see him. Wondering if I'll be able to get that bottle out of there real quick. Nope, 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 nope. Where'd he go? I'm gonna give him a little puff. Of... Oh, he's up on the lid now. Yeah, I know. Crack out the side. No, you can't quite make it out there. Come on, go down. Go down. Well, we might be here for a minute. You gotta love these feisty arboreals. Let's see if I can get the paintbrush in there. Get him to go down a little bit. Go ahead and go down that way. Go down. There you go. All right, now we're gonna try to get this bottle out of here real fast. Beautiful. If you wanna pop the camera off of there, you'll be able to get a really good shot of here. Oh, yep, just, it's okay. Just take it right off the tripod and then come on over here quick. Oh, then of course he goes behind the cork bars. Sorry, guys. That's all right. I'd rather be safe than sorry with a feisty spider like this, though. You know, we don't need to get the best footage. There he is. I'm just going to pop that lid on just to be safe. Got some blue, purple feet. Yeah, it's a really pretty spider. I don't know. You might be able to get a, a decent view of him from the, if you want to come back over here. We can get this lid off without spooking him. I don't want him to run back up. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, I should get the camera right up over in here. And then do a zoom. Zoom. Oh, sorry. There we go, just like that. And you can't really see the color too well because of the way the light's shining, but... Yeah, I was able to see the blue on the feet on the other side. Yeah, they have they're really cool iridescent pads on their feet. But it's a beautiful spider, and like you guys have seen, he's pretty feisty, so you know, I don't recommend these guys for your average beginner tarantula enthusiast, but uh, if you're more in the intermediate range and you really like the arboreal tarantulas, this Flamingo Chylus Everetti is a great species to keep. Uh, you know, it needs to be a little bit moist, more moist than, than your average tarantula. You don't want to keep it arid dry. You do want to have the, the substrate, you know, have a nice moist layer in there, but not soaking wet. And then, of course, you know, cork bark, and like I said earlier, they, they do tend to do, especially at the sling and juvenile stage, so far as I've seen, they do tend to do a whole lot of burrowing, too, I'm so. Oh. Going for a little drink. Oh, he's going for a swim. Look at that. Yeah. Are you getting that? Best that I can. Well, that's crazy. Hand the camera to you and see if you can. He's actually trying to go underneath the water. Oh, now he's coming out. Yeah. yeah. He's giving Maybe us quite the show. Yeah, he's a pretty spider. Hey. And I'm just hoping that we'll be able to find this one a female at some point in time and maybe get a few of the babies. Where are you going? Are you petting off? That's it. All right, well, I think we're going to get the spider up on the shelf and uh, out from underneath these lights so we don't cause it any more stress than we, we already have. All right, so our second Flamingo Chylus that we're doing is the Flamingo Chylus Arboricola, and same thing, same enclosure actually. Got a really good deal on these, so we're gonna dump our creature soil in there. Then add a few scoops of our own substrate to give us a little bit, a little bit higher substrate level, because both of these guys like to do a little bit of burrowing, and as you'll see a little bit here with this one too, it's pretty much burrowed down in there, although it did use the cork bark for a kind of a web tunnel as well. And we'll just mix that up. All right, there we go. Could you hand me that piece of cork bark, please? Yeah. Tap that down in there. Thank you. Yep. And then we'll get our cork bark in there. Like I said in the other one, you kind of want to make sure that you, you have a little bit of space in between you and the or the top of the cork bark and the, the lid there so that you got a little bit of room to work with and the spider is not just right here automatically when you're going to feed to do something like that. It's got a little ways so you, you can kind of see it coming. 
And then we'll throw a little bit of that sphagnum moss in there. Now this stuff is usually clumped up pretty good and we just kind of take a pair of scissors and kind of hash through it a little bit to break it up. I mean, it's nice to have some clumps, but some of those chunks are pretty big, so we kind of cut them down a little bit. And we'll probably just put the rest of this in here, actually. And then the tarantula will use these pieces of moss for working with the dirt curtains and all that, and it also helps hold a little bit of humidity, and it just looks nice. I like that natural look. And we'll get a water dish in here with this one as well. Well, with pretty much every tarantula. <laughs> and I always kind of try to sink it down into the dirt a little bit. I don't think it really makes too much of a difference. I think it just looks a little better. And Like you saw in that last one, the tarantula decided to actually kind of try to take a little swim, which I've only seen just a couple of times. All right. Take our squirt bottle and fill up our water dish. Just like so. And we'll spray down the enclosure a little bit, get a little moisture in there, and then like I said, you know, we already just made this batch of substrate, so the substrate's actually still pretty moist, so we don't need to add too much moisture to the enclosure. But uh, these guys do appreciate a little bit of moisture for sure. They're not, not an arid species by any means. You don't have to have it super swampy or anything like you would with like a Theraphosa species or anything, but you do want to keep a humid area so that they can kind of gravitate toward that area if they want it. And, it seems to be, in my experience, it seems to be the preferred area for the tarantulas to actually be around the, the human spot. So anyhow, there's that enclosure. And now we're going to go ahead and cut out and we'll go to the rehouse part for the Flamingo Calis arboricola. All right, guys, so the second Flamingo Calis we're going to do is the Flamingo Calis arboricola. And this one, we named Mr. Pib, he's, you know, arboricola, Mr. Pib, you know, whatever. This one is another suspect male. Actually, I think we confirmed, yeah, this one was a confirmed male. So it's pretty much the same thing. We got our catch bottle here, all the tools we need, the new enclosure made up, and the bin. And this bottle, as you guys saw in the last one, is made, it, you know, I picked a bottle that was pretty much the size of the, uh, the mouth of these mainstay containers, just so that there wasn't a whole lot of room for the tarantula to get out. And uh, luckily, for this last time, I did it that way because that thing was feisty, as you guys saw. So we're going to carefully take out the cork bark. Oh, here he comes. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. He might just go straight up into this. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what we can do here. He out? Yeah, he's out already. There's some leggies. Yep, I'm oh. hoping he just goes straight up the, straight up the cup. Come on, come on, let's go up there. Another real, real feisty one, of course. Not yet. I really wish I could have gotten that cork bark out of there. Come on up there, buddy. Come on up. Okay. Oh, Quite a bit. Wow. All we gotta do is get him to go up the side of the bottle here. Oh, look at the fangs and the threat pose. He's a big bad spider. I can't believe how fast these ones have grown. Yep, I know they've really, really put on some size over the last, especially the last couple months. Gosh darn. <laughs> here, get on the side of the bottle. Come on. There you go. Up the bottle. Up the bottle. Perfect. Yeah, that's all you had to do. Well, that one went a lot, a lot easier, didn't it? No, it's not over yet. So. No, it's not over yet. Here we go. That is a Aww. one heck of a beautiful spider. Hi. You're cute. Hey, you're a lot calmer. And this is a confirmed male for Mango Kylis arboricola. Mr. Pip. Oh, we're here. There we go with the there we go with the threat pose again. I don't know if you're catching too much of that, but yeah, I'm getting it. Trying to be a big, bad, mean spider. All right, so I'm gonna have you move this other enclosure out of here. And then I'll set him down for a second here. 
We'll move this one over a little bit. Oh, oh yeah, that's good. Thank you. There you go. And now we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to have you stand with the lid probably ready to go. Okay. Actually, you might want to turn the enclosure towards you, or like turn it around like 180 degrees. So the lid yeah. claps are... There you go. <laughs> He's still threat posing, yeah. All right, is the camera set up decent so that we can see what's going on here? Mm, yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, so we're going to try to do the same thing with this one, except without the person. without the running away here. I think we're just going to go straight down to the bottom of this one. Let's hope. And hopefully he'll just... Oh, come on. Is there like these down? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, he's trying to, trying to take a chunk out of that paintbrush, that's for sure. Oh, sorry. You're okay. All right, now he's busy threat posing, so we can actually, if you want to, I'll hold the lid if you want to grab the camera and come over here and take a look at this. All right, let's see. <laughs> so you know that is one feisty tarantula. He's still just sitting there. You can zoom in a little bit. There you go. A real pretty spider. And obviously, you know, just like the other one, these Farmingo Kyluses are... Pretty feisty spiders. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend them for a beginner. But if you're comfortable, you know, with the arboreal tarantulas and the faster tarantulas and stuff and a more intermediate level, these are definitely a great, great genus, and this particular is a great species to keep. I'm just going to keep threatening us there. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, it works. Okay, well, I'm going to pop this lid on because we're already pressing our luck here a little bit, I think. Yeah. Well, all right, folks, that was the second rehouse there. Like we said, uh, Formango Kylis Arboricola, and this one's a confirmed male. And it's funny, he's just standing in that position. Yep. Yeah. Just wanted to show you guys this. It has been a full probably five, six, seven minutes, something like that. And this tarantula, you know, I figured I'd tack this on here, is still just sitting there in that same threat pose that we left him in. My wife and I went out of the other room to grab a drink and did a couple things and then we come back and we're like oh my god he's still just standing there threat posing the heck out of us but <laughs> you can get too bad it's the reflection from that ring light there but you can still get a pretty good idea of what he looks like he's a beautiful spider mm -hmm. but all right yeah i just wanted to tag that on the end there because i couldn't believe that this thing was still just standing there threat posing like <laughs> you can see it's I mean, we're a minute into this, and oh. oh, 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 he might be done now. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, yeah, he got tired of holding his arms up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, we're going to cut out and then uh, go ahead and do the outro here. Okay, guys, so now that we're done with the rehouse, we got a little update on our Gigas communal. Uh, these guys have all, I think pretty much all of them have molted now to third instar. There's a few little tiny molts in here. Here's one. I'll see if I can get it out. They're just teeny, teeny, tiny little molds. You can see that. It's not very big at all, but uh, I think pretty much all of them molted. I've pulled, I think, seven molts out of here so far, so... And I don't know if there's any more hiding in there or not. There's probably a couple more in there somewhere. But uh, So as far as I know so far, we've still got all our slings, which is good. Just doing a little maintenance here. I'm gonna give them some water, top off their water dish, overflow it just a smidge. And then we're gonna go ahead and feed them, show you guys how we feed them. It's real simple, we just take mealworms, cut them in half, and they, uh, at this stage, they'll scavenge on the mealworms. They don't need, you know, live wiggly prey at this point. And I usually just kind of set them all right over here in one area. That way I can kind of see if they've been moved around and whatnot. And I usually feed one piece for each of the ten that's in there, so I'll put five mealworms cut in half and then ten little pieces. And hopefully everybody's getting enough to eat. I haven't seen a whole lot of activity. I've seen a few of them here and there, but I uh, haven't seen all of them out at the same time. I've seen maybe, maybe three or four of them out at one time. But they're pretty reclusive. They've done quite a bit of burrowing. You can see there's a couple of different web tunnel entrances here, here, here. They've got a web tunnel entrance and then there's another one like right over here too that you can't really see at this angle. 
But so far, so good. These guys are doing all right. And I think I saw the substrate move over here right before I turned the camera on, so I'm going to see if I can't get you guys a, a glimpse of one of the one of the spiders. I don't think so. I thought there was one. There. Yeah, was the, oh, there we go, right there. He is... Where'd he go? Oh. Oh, there they are. There are a couple of them coming out over on the other side over there. You see that? He must feel the vibrations, I'm guessing. There's one of them right there. Oh, you're going to make a run for it. Let's see if I can get you guys. See him right there, scrunched up by the water dish. And then there's a few more over in this area here that we're moving around. But it looks like there's another molt, molt right down in there, too. So that's eight or nine molts that I pulled out of there. So anyhow, everything's going good with the Geix Camille so far. Just another little update for you guys. I figured, like I said, I was going to kind of let you guys follow this on the channel. So like I said, everything's going good so far. I'm going to give them another probably two molts, maybe maybe three in this enclosure, depending on how much size they put on with the molts. And then we'll uh, be doing an enclosure upgrade. And we'll definitely film that because, you know, rehousing 10 spiders is always a, a fun experience. I've never actually done that many. We did have three at one time, like I mentioned before in a couple of the other videos, and we rehoused those, and that didn't go so bad. We just got them all in separate vials, just kind of like you always see them do with the Belfouri communals. So hopefully it goes all right. All right, well, now we'll uh, move on to the next part of the video, guys. Okay, guys, well, there's our video. Uh we house the two from Ingokyla species, the, Arver or the Arboricola and the Everetti. As you saw, they're both pretty feisty tarantulas, and, you know, like I said in the video, I, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't recommend that if you're a beginner, you know, you go out and just run out and buy these species just because you saw them in the video or something like that. You, you really want to become a little more comfortable with the faster tarantulas and the arboreal tarantulas before you think about getting, you know, an Arbig, Ar or a Formingo Chylus or, uh, you know, a Tapanakinius or any of the little bit, you know, more spicy, you know, New World arboreals. They're just, you know, they're a little bit more than I think your average beginner can handle. But if you're comfortable with those, you know, I, I definitely recommend these species. They're beautiful tarantulas. They're great to keep. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's about all I got to say about those. Uh, you guys saw the, uh, the little update I did for the Gygus Camino there. You know, they're doing real well. So we'll continue to bring you updates on those in the future. And uh, as always, you know, we're going to have a couple videos for you guys to check out. And you can subscribe. And, uh share like leave some comments down below let us know what you thought and uh, tell us about the uh, tarantulas that you have if you keep these species we'd love to hear about it and we'll always reply to pretty much every comment and we'll see you guys next week have a great night